Hello everyone, today uh, I'm gonna record a new video about Cargo 3. It's been a while uh, since I recorded my last tutorial and uh, Cargo has changed the interface completely. So now applying the same tutorials, the same customizations which I showed you for Cargo 2 is kind of hard just because, uh, well, some parts can be just confusing and some uh, parts uh, just has changed dramatically so we are not able to do the same things. Eventually I will re uh, record all these tutorials for Cargo 3 so you can use them everywhere for new websites and for Cargo 2 websites but uh, yeah by now I'll just try to cover some basics to help you to navigate here and maybe to apply uh, my previous tutorials. Mm, uh, I will show you this example with the custom cursor and cover some uh, other details. But uh, before we start, I just want to say that, uh, well, I'm not planning to comment cargo decisions uh, much uh, about their interface. Uh, only one thing I want to say is that now we have much more freedom in terms of design, so we can even create new uh, textiles. We're not restricted with two, uh, with, uh, I mean, with four. Before that, we had four textiles um, here. We have body copy H1, H2, and small. But now we can create uh, our own uh, styles. Uh, we can adjust our text, which is also pretty cool. Uh, but we had the same abilities here, actually, so this is uh, not very different. Uh, what else? Uh, we have effects, which is nice. Um, we can animate things. Uh, also, for text, we still have icons. We have um, some other tools. Yeah, and the ruler. Okay, this is all nice. Uh, maybe a curious part is that we can add a button now. So, and also we can emit videos because before that it was totally confusing to um, work. Uh, it requires uh, you to work with code directly, but now it's a little bit easier. So yeah, that's how it goes. Uh, but the coolest part about Cargo Collective is that they kept an ability to work with code directly. I think this is really wise because uh, most of people who work uh, with Cargo Collective or who build their own websites on Cargo Collective, they all want to make them uh, as unique as possible, as creative as possible. And uh, that's where the code is really a must. Because, uh, well, these panels uh, can, be, can allow you lots of flexibility but it's never enough if you want to build something really cool. And I was thinking, um, many people are reaching me out uh, just to ask to build something for them. And unfortunately, I don't have that much time to um, help everyone. And also, most of customizations are different from uh, one another just with few lines of CSS. And uh, I was thinking that probably I can record you a course this is going to be just HTML, CSS uh, for beginners. And uh, I, I can cover some core concepts, uh, applying uh, this uh, knowledge for cargo. And you will be able to not just copy my code and uh, copy my tutorials, but uh, create your own customizations. This is not uh, that much knowledge you need. Uh, code seems pretty complex, but in fact, to customize your styles, you don't really need to know that much. So let me know what you think. Uh, would you be interested in watching this course or what should be there, uh, which knowledge you particularly want to learn? And yeah, I'm listening and uh, I'm ready to record this course uh, at the beginning of the next year. So yeah, let me know what you think. Okay, with that said, let's move to the main part of this tutorial. Uh, let's go through the all difference and everything you need to know to apply my uh, Cargo 2 tutorials to a Cargo 3 website. First of all, let's talk about page structure. So this is how it looks here. And you can find the same thing under this burger icon for Cargo 3. So this is pretty the same page uh, structure and you can uh, create new pages, sets or pin your pages, uh, except only one thing, we no longer see our page uh, IDs. So if I click on the page, I can easily uh, assess this ID, but here it's not that obvious. To get this ID, you need to click this code icon, which is uh, actually the same as this button, code view. So if you are pasting some code from my tutorials uh, to this window, you need to do that here. And um, 
yeah, if you change uh, your tab from HTML to CSS, uh, this is number uh, which you can use instead of your page ID. Uh, it won't be working for all cases because uh, cargo changes structure too, but in most cases, that's gonna be the same as the thing. So uh, also you may notice that here we had only HTML part, but here we also have CSS. So this is the CSS which you can write for this particular page. Uh, it shouldn't be shown on other pages. Let's try it out. So first let's uh, create a custom class. That's how we um, style things. Let's call it red, for example. Okay, and then let's set every uh, element with class red to color red. Okay, uh, the color changed immediately and let's save it. Uh, I don't see my class for some reasons. This is a bag, but okay, let's do it again. Okay, so that's how it goes. And then let's move to another page. Here I want to create uh, also H1 element. Let's go here and let's add a class red. I click update. So you may notice that nothing has changed. If I go back to my previous page, the color is still red. If I go here, color is not red. So even though the class is um, the same, all CSS that you are writing here uh, is valid only for this page. It can be kind of useful, uh, but if you want to uh, reach some CSS, uh, for some global CSS, you need this button. So this CSS is uh, globally used for all pages and this part is HTML. Uh, let's move to the cargo tool to compare. If you want to find your global CSS in HTML, you go here and open your CSS editor and you can, um, you can switch between HTML and CSS and all these styles and HTML is gonna be uh, valid for the whole website. That's why I call them global. And the same thing you can find here. So this is a CSS. Uh, it's much uh, less code now, which is nice because I think it will be much easier to work with. And also we have uh, HTML. You can create an element. Uh, let's create a new element here and uh, it, this element will be seen uh, everywhere for like it will be valid for each page. Uh, let's style it a little bit. Well, I don't recommend you to style things like that, but for this example, it's fine. Um, position fixed. Uh, let's say uh, bottom 10 pixels and uh, left 10 pixels. Okay, let's see. Yeah, now we see uh, hello and well, actually we just created, um, we just created a pin page. If we go to any other page like this one, we still see our hello. Uh, I don't recommend you to do that because uh, we have pinned pages for this need, but I just wanted to show you that uh, all this code will be valid for ev every single page you have. Okay, uh, this is one difference uh, because if uh, I like, let's say I use this code for creating this custom cursor and uh, let me show you what's wrong with this now. The problem with this code is that we are using some functions from outside and cargo restrict that. I don't know for what reason it works here. Uh, probably these restrictions were, were not that strict before, but now um, it no longer works. So let me show you. If I copy this thing and paste it here, it's supposed to be uh, doing the same job, but yeah, uh, you see now that uh, it hides the cursor, but uh, we don't see our trailing cursor anymore. It happens because Cargo prevents you from copying some hard, harmful scripts from outside, which is pretty wise, I think. Uh, but yeah, we cannot use any um, custom libraries and we cannot connect some outside world scripts. Um, this is how it goes. 
And probably this is what you need to know. Uh, let me know what else you want to know about Cargo 3 in comparison with Cargo 2, uh, which tutorials you need the most. And I will start recording uh, new tutorials for all galleries for everything I made for Cargo 2. And uh, yeah, see you in my next videos.